Oh goodness, you guys voted for this one on the Discord server, so what am I to do except suffer along? Anyways, since there is so many of these damn things in game, this video is going to be structured a bit differently than usual. Oh yeah, and this wouldn't be a meme guide video without Gaijo making some major change or update while I'm working on the video that requires me to redo the entire fucking script and delay the video. You know, like a new set of BR changes that decompress top tier just enough to go and require a complete rewrite of half of the MiG-23s. Anyways, without further ado, here we go. The Mikoyan Gurevich 23, NATO codename Flogger, is a swing wing abomination of a fighter interceptor, also built in fighter bomber and frontline strike variants, famous for looking cool and having a spotty track record that went down in history as a piece of shit. Or did it? A plane convoluted in a propaganda arms race from the height of the Cold War, with one side calling it the best thing ever and the other calling it an absolute piece of dog shit. And its combat history is equally mixed. The MiG-23 still shines on today as the reason to start arguments in the comment sections of r slash non-credible defense reddit posts, so whether you are a long-time veteran who loves flying or fighting the floggers in-game, or a new hatchling looking to learn how to fly your new shiny $70 MiG-23 ML that your mommy bought you for Christmas, then strap in, because now it's flogging time. The MiG-23 is quite the plane in real life, being one of the longest serving aircraft in the world with many still in use today, alongside also being the most mass produced swing wing aircraft ever, so not talking about its history won't do it any justice. You see, when this thing was conceived, it was apparent that the current MiG-21 was no longer adequate for long range interception, mainly due to not having long range fuel tanks, not having a good radar or advanced GCI system not having bitches, and most importantly, not having any long-range weapons, with most MiG-21s at the time relying on internal cannons or R-3S missiles, which is just a backwards-engineered AIM-9B. The first attempt to increase the range of the MiG-21 was the YE-8 Interceptor, also called the MiG-23 prototype. Yes, this is just a MiG-21 with an identity crisis dressed up like a Eurofighter Typhoon, but about 20 years before the Typhoon. It had upgraded radar and the ability to carry Vimpel's latest medium-range missile, the R-23, increasing its interception range. However, suddenly came a new requirement for the MiG-23 program, the ability to operate from highways and short takeoff on paved fields. Now up until this point, you have to remember that the MiG-17, MiG-19, and MiG-21 all had comically long takeoff and landing runs that required paved runways so shortening it to STOL range and being highway and dirt strip capable was a crazy idea. So MiG completely redesigned the aircraft from the ground up, a clean sheet design if you will, and came up with two designs. The first had lift fans in the fuselage, and was basically a VTOL capable MiG-23 with MiG-21 wings. Actually, if you take away the VTOL engines, it's literally just a Chinese J-8, but about 20 years before the J-8. The lift fans were basically dead weight after takeoff, and the plane had abysmal flying performance. Surely then the second design was better, right? Well, you can be forgiven for making the mistake of thinking so. The second design was a swing wing type, and the Russians did not know how to build these correctly yet. The only other swing wing built by Russia at this point had half of the wing on the pivot sweep, the SU-17. The MiG-23 would be the first fully sweeping wing built by the USSR, and uh... Yeah, the MiG-23-2 prototype had an airframe limit of 3.5 Gs because the wing pivots were about as weak as a Soviet farmer after a three-year famine. Yeah, it was purely dog shit, but it sure beat having the deadweight VTOL system on an inbred MiG-21 with the maneuverability of a brick. So they went with the swing wing design and decided to fix the problems and stability in wing limits later. 
which they actually did very well, but we'll get to that in a bit. The MiG-23's avionics were also no slouch either. The MiG-23 was built from the ground up around a new system for interception, using the RP-23 radar set and fire control system and a new advanced GCI system, allowing it to fire the R-23 medium-range missiles and more importantly, data link its radar guidance with other nearby aircraft. Highly advanced technology for this time which was far ahead of its rivals. So where the hell did this thing go wrong and earn its horrible reputation? Well, uh, that's actually a very, very long story, so uh, enough ranting about whether or not it was good in real life, let's talk about it in-game now. Before we start talking about the different variants and how to play them, it is very important that you learn how to manage your radar, IRST, and manual wing sweep, and when to utilize each of those things. For that, you are going to need to bind some new controls. Before we move on, go and bind a key to the following control sets if you have not already. Wing sweep axis. Switch wing sweep control mode. Switch secondary weapon. Switch radar IRST on off. Switch between Radar and IRST. Change Radar IRST mode. Change Radar IRST search mode. Change Radar IRST scope scale. Change Radar IRST target to lock. Lock Radar IRST on target. And finally, Radar IRST beyond within visual range combat. By binding these controls of learning exactly what they do and when to use them correctly, you can easily increase the effectiveness of the MiG-23s in-game by a lot. Practice around with these controls in test flight if you are not already familiar with them. Now, back to actually playing the MiG-23, with manual wing sweep control and proper knowledge of when to throw it back, uh, the, the wings I mean, you can two-circle almost everything you face and this can prove a very useful ace up your sleeve in the final 1v1 of a match. Likewise, knowing how to use your radar and IRST will increase the effectiveness of your R-23 and R-24 missiles a lot, especially when you use the right tool and mode for the right time. Now is also a good time to point out that the MiG-23 family has four different types of wings for different variants, each drastically affecting how the plane flies, and to familiarize yourself with all four, I'm going to very quickly explain them with these cool Microsoft Paint drawings that I made for you. This is Type 1 only used on prototypes and pre-production models, which are not in-game. Let's ignore it. This is Type 2. The biggest change is the reinforcement of the wing pivot, increasing the G-limit from 3.5 to 5 Gs, and the addition of the Dogtooth Vortex Generator for better stability and higher instant AOA. This is the kind of wing found on the MiG-23M and MF in-game. There is also a second kind of Type 2 wing, unofficially referred to as Gen 2, just to tell the difference. This one has reinforced hydraulics and wing spars which increase the G-limit to 7.5, but otherwise completely identical on the outside. This is the one found on the ML and MLA in-game. The Type 3 wing is specifically designed for ground attack models, and is optimized for low altitude flight by changing the deployable slats shape and adding leading edge extensions. The Type 3 wings in-game are found only on the ground attacker models, namely the MiG-23BN and both MiG-27s. Finally, we have the Type 4 wing, which is the best of them all. This one is lighter, stronger, and meaner looking. The addition of pointy vortex generators to the wing group and automatic dogfight slats increased the dogfight potential of this wing by a lot. The internals were also reinforced and alongside the lighter weight resulted in an upgraded G-limit of 8.5. This kind of wing in real life and in games only used on a single flogger, the non-export variant of the MiG-23 MLD. Also, all the G-limits I mentioned are the real-life numbers. Keep in mind that these G-limits are actually a bit higher in War Thunder due to the simplified flight models. The older flogger wings were more flimsy and inefficient, while the later ones were a major upgrade in both rigidity and flight performance. While most of the differences were internal to increase the strength and G-limit, there was some external modifications that can be used to tell them apart, such as the lack of the dog tooth on Type 1, the vortex generators and smaller dogfight slats on Type 4, and the leading edge extensions on the Type 3. Anyhow, now let's talk about the different variants in-game, their history, and how to play each one. Mm -hmm. 
While there was a bunch of prototypes and pre-production models and then came the MiG-23S, which was a placeholder and honestly just an overall piece of shit and not even worth calling a MiG-23, the first true standardized production variant took to the skies in June 1972. And it was called the MiG-23M. And there was also an export variant called the MiG-23MF, which stands for motherfucker. The M featured multiple upgrades over the early production variants, namely to its wings and radar. The MiG-23M replaced the flimsy Type 1 wings on the older models with the Type 2, which had the famous dogtooth leading edge acting as a vortex generator. The wing itself was reinforced, giving the MiG-23M and the MF a 5G limit at high speeds compared to the 3.5 on older models. The radar was also heavily upgraded from the initial Saphir-23 to the N002 Saphir-23D featuring better look-down and chaff filtering capabilities. Both the MiG-23M and MF in-game are 11.0 and are completely identical. The M can be found in the Soviet tree at the top of the MiG-23 folder, while the MF can be found as an event vehicle in the German tech tree, given out as a reward during the 2021 winter event. The only difference between these two aircraft is that the MF gets the R60MK instead of the R60M, which is just an export variant of the R60M meaning that in-game, it is 100% identical. The first-generation floggers are quite a roller coaster in the history of War Thunder, with the MiG-23MF absolutely tanking German top-tier win rates to an all-time low for a good month after release due to being a free event vehicle. And more famously, the MiG-23M on release having a messed up flight model, messed up weapon suite, and easily one of the worst stock grinds in War Thunder history at the time. It would take a while for all of those problems to be completely fixed, but by the time that happened, the MiG-23 MLD came out about a week later, completely overshadowing the M and causing most people to simply forget about it. Today, after the flight model and weapon fixes, and especially with the top bracket being 12.7, which the MiG-23 M cannot face as 11.0, the MiG-23 M and MF are absolute menaces when played correctly. The MiG-23 M and MF can be best categorized as boom and zoom fighters with a side of rate fighting. For the average player, they are best played in a boom and zoom role, interdicting at high speed and using their all-aspect missiles with IRST slaving for silent attack, leaving before the enemy gets to strike back. But for the more experienced players who have mastered the art of flogging with the floggers, and have the hundred different keybinds needed to operate all the radar modes, IRST modes, and manual link sweep, then you may consider more aggressive tactics, especially when down-tiered. The MiG-23M with proper manual control of the wing sweep can outrate pretty much anything it can face in a down tier, minus the F5E and the A10 for very obvious reasons. One must still be very careful, especially against aircraft carrying much long-range high-G missiles such as the Python 3 and the AIM-9L, because the MiG-23M and MF get 12 whole flares. You get a single KDS-12 dispenser mounted on the bottom of the plane. Also. Be careful about being too aggressive with the manual wing sweep and wing gripping on these two early variants of the flogger, as the wings on these two in particular are prone to simply falling off in high G maneuvers, as the wings were about as stable as the Soviet economy during Stalin's five-year plan. All in all, the MiG-23M and MF act as the ultimate stepping stone and a massive training aid for both Soviet and German pilots, switching from the previous MiG-21 BIS that relies on its great aggressive flight performance and onto the future MiG-29 which relies a lot more on its better avionics and missiles. The MiG-23 is a smooth transition of playstyles from one to the other, sitting in between and being decent, but not the best at both playstyles. These first-generation floggers paved the path to mastering the second generation, and later, the fulcrums. As we said earlier, the early MiG-23 family had many design shortcomings and issues, and the Soviets opted to fix those issues along the way with later variants. This is where many of the second-generation floggers come in. Only three years after the first-generation MiG-23M and MF took to the skies, the new and revised MiG-23ML flew for the first time in 1975. The L stood for Lyoki, meaning lightweight, or, as I say, it stands for Ligma. But don't let the name fool you, 
the ML was far more than just a lightweight MiG-23M, with the name actually being more misleading than a family vlogger's clickbait thumbnail. In reality, the MiG-23 ML's upgrades over the MiG-23M included a complete redesign of the airframe, removal of multiple internal fuel tanks to replace the center of mass in a more favorable spot, redesign of the landing gear to be lighter and stronger, and a full overhaul of the wings and their pivot mechanisms, resulting in the upgraded variant of the Type 2 wing with an increased G-limit of 7.5G. This, in turn, allowed a higher angle of attack at the swept-back positions, increasing the dogfighting ability of the MiG-23. The second major upgrade was the engine, which is now providing about 20% more thrust and increasing the thrust-to-weight ratio of the ML to 0.83, a considerable increase from the 0.77 of the first generation. More surprisingly is that since Liolka, the engine manufacturer, was now given enough time to cook, they actually managed to not only make the engine far more reliable in addition to increasing its power, but they also managed to increase the fuel efficiency as well. The defense aspect was also upgraded, with the addition of new BZP-5060 countermeasure dispensers along the top of the fuselage. This upgraded the countermeasures count on the MiG-23s from the shitty 12 flares to a total of 72, so if you hated how little flares you got on the M and MF, you're gonna love this one. The final and biggest upgrade to the second generation flogger was its avionics set. Most importantly, the radar system. The N002 Saphir 23D from the MiG-23M was replaced with the brand new N003 Saphir 23ML. This new fire control system allowed the MiG-23ML to fire the new and improved R-24 missile over the older R-23, and the TP-23 IRST was upgraded to the TP-23M, giving it more range and countermeasure resistance. Shortly after the MiG-23 ML entered service, the radar was once again slightly upgraded, with an upgraded fire control system and increased chaff resistance, being called the Saphir 23 MLA, used on the, you guessed it, MiG-23 MLA. Anyways, the MiG-23 ML and MLA in-game are almost identical in playstyle and are both at 11.3, with the ML being found as a rank 7 premium in the Soviet tech tree, while the MLA is found in the German, between the MiG-21 folder and the first generation MiG-29. The only difference between the Soviet Premium ML and the German Tree MLA is the upgraded radar and fire control system. The Saphir 23 ML on the MiG-23 ML has worse rear aspect tracking capability at low altitudes and does not allow the user to mix one R24T and one R24R in a single loadout, whereas the Saphir 23 MLA on the MiG-23 MLA does indeed have better filtering in rear aspect at ground level and does allow the user to mix different R24s in the same loadout due to the upgraded fire control system. In-game, the playstyle of both can be best described as a somewhat more aggressive MiG-23M or MF, respectively, with how well they perform being directly proportional to how hard you ball. You have better missiles, better radar, better engines, better wings, and in turn, better dogfighting performance and defensive capability as a result, for only a 0.3 increase in battle rating. These second-generation floggers can be best described as a tool of destruction compared to the early floggers, and therefore, the MiG-23 ML and MLA are best played aggressively unless fully up to face F-16s and MiG-29s, in which case a more conservative boom-and-zoom playstyle is better used against unsuspecting targets. That's if you face F-16s. Let's be real here, the 11.3 to 12.3 matchmaker on the US side is a little dented right now. And by dented, I mean like the heads on these double lobotomized teams composed almost entirely of free RP and SL pinatas known as F4S monkeys bombing bases. And by the way, I'm sorry if you're one of those people who bomb bases at top tier jets. That's gotta be my least favorite mental disability. Anyways, so when you're not balling on 4th gens with your massive advantage of having IQ above single digits, you can comfortably dogfight pretty much anything you face, bar the one circle spicy Doritos like the Mirage 2000s and the Kfir family. The second generation floggers require proper control bindings even more than the first, specifically the controls we talked about earlier. Once you have mastered the second generation floggers, it is now fair to say that you have the sufficient skill to move on to the first generation MiG-29. Or, as I recommend, if you enjoyed flying the floggers, now is a great time to move on to the ultimate god of the flogger family. Rank 6, Rank 7, all gone, with Rank 8 soon to follow. Your kind know nothing but hunger, purged all players from the upper tiers, and yet they remain unsatiated. 
as do you. You've taken everything from me, Wallet Warrior, and now all that remains is perfect hatred. Wallet Warrior, I will she you down. Break you apart, slay your retarded team across the stars. I will shoot you all down until every player on your team begs for mercy. I shall relish ending you here and now. The MiG-23 MLD is the ultimate production flogger built in the early 80s and were the last production MiG-23s to leave the production line, built as a stopgap until the MiG-29 could enter production. Basically, the Soviets decided to take the formula that made the ML and MLA so great and turn it up to fucking 11. The real-life details are not important here, but long story short, this thing has the RWR of a MiG-29, the radar with many parts from the MiG-29, MiG-29 missiles, MiG-29 fire control system, and other cool stuff such as Type 4 wings and a lighter airframe. Now in-game, the MLD will act as your final stone on the journey of the floggers. If you played the previous floggers merely as a tool of destruction, then this one can be best described as a fucking act of god. The playstyle of the MLD is crazy, but also easy. Not because the plane is overpowered or easy to use, but because of all you learned from the previous floggers before this. Yes, you learned a lot on your journey playing the previous floggers, but you know who hasn't? The Wallet Warriors. We don't king shame on this channel, but if the F4S players were not into getting raped, then maybe they should stop bringing all those bombs on their fighter. But the real fun of the MLD is not the free F4S seal clubbing, but rather, fighting the fourth generation shitfucks. It's so funny watching a Mirage 2000 or a Tomcat or an F-16 try to engage you thinking you're easy prey only to get their penis tickled until they not only fart, but blast the Taco Bell Supreme out of their ass after scaring the shit out of them with your comical performance. Or they mauled and cope in chat which is honestly worth it by itself. So, is this thing balanced? No, just like the rest of top tier. Is this thing easy to play? Absolutely fucking not. But is it fun? Boys will see this shit and say hell yeah. The MiG-23 MLD is best played as a rabid, bloodthirsty, no punches held back ML that's more aggressive. Your dogfights are more aggressive, your missile jousts are more aggressive, the same day shipping of enemy planes back to the hangar in pieces is even more aggressive, even your trash talk in chat is more aggressive. Did you know you can unlock the wheelchair emote after killing a thousand disabled children bombing in their premium jet? But even so, as millions of these disabled children bombing bases looked upon the skies, they saw hundreds of top tier jets. But there was only one plane that was bawling the hardest. They called him the Flogging One. It was truly built different. Then the fourth generation jets asked the MLD, Are you the strongest 11.3 because you are the MLD, or are you the MLD because you are the strongest 11.3? So the MLD responded calmly, Throughout all the queue times, my missile flinging abilities are truly sublime. And throughout the 11.3 matchmaker and the top tier meta, I alone am the Flogging One. Yet when the Snail God was creating the top tier jets, it asked the MLD, Out of all the top tier jets I created, who would win, them or you? The MLD responded, If they were all to release their A9Ms and R27ERs, they might give me a little trouble. So, would you lose? asked the snail. To which the MLD responded, Nah, I'd win. That is bullshit blazing, still my heart is blazing. If the word kill me, I don't need a new God, I love flying this thing. The MiG-23 was a very versatile airframe, and it was adapted to many, and I mean many, different things. Things that ranged from stupid to good. 
you know, from testing things like stealth, forward swept wings, data linked drones, and a lot of other stupid shit, the MiG 23's most stupid conversion actually came in the form of a ground attack aircraft, starting with the MiG 23B prototype. The MiG 23B had its intakes and engines retuned for low altitude performance, and the nose was chopped off, removing the radar and increasing pilot's visibility for ground attack. The avionics were updated slightly for more ground attack oriented sets, and the cockpit received armor plating on the sides to protect the pilot. The first member of this family we have in game is the MiG 23BN, found at 9.7 in the German tech tree. The BN is uh, quite interesting, and is easily one of the most teetered on planes in the German tech tree. Now, some idiots will tell you it's absolute dog shit because you have no missiles, no flares, and no guided ordnance. But you gotta remember that this thing is literally an 11.0 airframe. At 9.7, you can outrun literally anything you face and outrate the stuff you can't with the sweeping wings. And also, you get giant S8K rocket pods to use as makeshift flares anyways. And before anyone chimes in that they don't work, you just have to actually turn a bit before using them because they shoot out of the front. You also get the UPK-23 gun pods and S-24 rockets with a distance fuse which all in all should make very short work of enemy subsonic aircraft, which you'll be facing a lot by the way. Now moving on to the real ground pounding floggers, the MiG-27 family. The MiG-27s differ from the MiG-23B family by two different upgrades. First off, the avionics. The MiG-27s had their nose landing light replaced with a proper TV targeting system, and the cockpits were fitted with more controls for such weaponry and sensors. But let's be real here, you are not playing the MiG-27 for the cool nose or the laser bombs. The real upgrade here is the gun. The already great Kryazev Shipunov 23 double barrel 23mm cannon was replaced in favor of the absolute horse cock that is the Kryazev Shipunov 630, nicknamed Gasha by many Soviet and Indian MiG-27 pilots. And before you say that the Russians copied the 30mm ground attack rotary cannon idea from the American A-10, I must remind you that the MiG-27's first flight was two years before the A-10's first flight. Also, the Gasha was gas-operated rather than hydraulic like the Avenger, which gave it a few advantages such as instant firing without needing to spin up, a far higher rate of fire, and of course, the insane recoil. You see, unlike the GAU-8 Avenger, which was not only built from the ground up, but then the A-10 was built from the ground up around that gun specifically, the Gasha was just an AK-630 Sea Wiz from current Soviet battleships, quite literally hammered to the bottom of a MiG-23 with no proper recoil dampening or modifications. That's like taking a phalanx and slapping it to the bottom of a Phantom and calling it a day. So this thing is actually insane! You get 30mm high explosive and armor piercing high explosive that just obliterates anything it hits. And all aspect R60Ms on top of that for self defense. You also get some of the best CAS in game on the later MiG 27K, but we play Air RB here, so personally I just run all air to air missiles with a single TV bomb strapped to the bottom. But why take a single bomb in Air RB? You can't even kill a base, you might be asking. And to that I answer with this clip. This Gripen would have wiped our team if he rearmed and took off. Too bad he didn't expect my MiG-27 to be loaded with a single laser bomb I was specifically saving for his dumbass, or any dumbass, who decides to RTB before killing me. Y yeah, th this thing is funny as hell. All in all, the MiG-27s are not exactly good in air battles, but honestly, if you know what you're doing, they're not bad either, and definitely allow for some comical trolling and insane new ideas of different playstyles. The MiG-23BN is overpowered and under-tiered, and if you think otherwise, you fucking suck. Unless you're fully up-tiered, there is nothing that the subsonics can do to counter you, unless you decide to throw the game. Special delivery! Well, now let's run through the modifications of these planes very quickly. There are so many and we really ran out of time, so let's lop a few together. Starting with the MiG-23M and the MF, these two planes have completely identical modification trees and as such should be spaded in this order. You get your tiny flare pod stock, and there's no point in wasting your 12 countermeasure slots on carrying chaff, so flare standard is just fine. Start with R3S missiles, but don't actually take them because they're even worse than the AIM-9B. Next get the R13M1s, so you can get twice as many of your stock missile. Get the airframe to slightly minimize your wing gripping skill issues, especially under manual wing control. Then move on to the R60M. 
Now that you have your all aspect missiles, get the G-Suit and Wings Repair to maximize your dogfight potential and minimize your wings falling off because you've danced on that F5C too hard potential. Next, get the R23R and equally useless R23T. Not much to write home about for these, but you could try them out yourself to see if they work for you. Next, get the fire extinguisher so you don't end up like this guy from that one, plain anime. The MiG-23 glides surprisingly well without an engine in-game, unlike real life. So as long as you could put the fire out, you're probably making it back, or at least landing safely somewhere. After this, go back and work on the performance upgrades. Once those are done, I guess you can go back and work on bombs? Although if you're bombing bases in a MiG-23, I would like to kindly ask you to consider holding J for 3 seconds. In real life. Next up, the MiG-23 MLD, which has an identical modifications tree to the MiG-23 ML and MLA. Start with the R-13M1 to get more of your stock missile. Next, get Flare Chaff, so you can add on the KDS-12 dispenser that gives you 12 extra flares. Next, get the R-60Ms to be able to carry all aspect missiles at last. Finally, for Tier 2, get the Airframe. Starting with Tier 3, get the G-Suit, R-23R, and then the Wings Repair. You can skip the R-23T because it's absolutely useless. That way, you can start working on the R-24R, R-24T, EFS, Cover, and go back and get the rest of the performance modifications. Finally, I guess you can get the Ground Ordnance and the R-23T, but they're both equally useless in Air RB, and if you're bombing bases in a MiG-23 ML, MLD, or MLA, I need you to very quickly crash on takeoff. In real life. Moving on to the Ground Attack MiG-27s, for Air RB, you're gonna want to rush the performance modifications along with flares and air-to-air -air missiles. Also do the guided bombs or the KH-29Ts on the MiG-27K, because the laser bomb is funny for removing airfield campers. The MiG-23BN is solely overpowered because of its flight performance, so focus on the performance upgrade and I guess get the gun pods after so you can have backup weapons after you run out of ammo on your main gun. There you go. Now that's all the floggers spaded, so good job. Unless you're a wallet warrior scrub lord who GE'd all of his modifications, or worse yet, you bought the premium ML. Then, uh, not a good job I guess, because you didn't really do a job unless you count the painful and tiring task of pulling out your wallet. Or judging by the average mental age of most of the people I see in the comments, ran to your mother and asked her to buy you a JPEG of a MiG-23. Anyways, your MiG-23 is spaded now, so uh, go run wild I guess. And there you have it. That's how you play the Flogger family in War Thunder, as of the Air Superiority update. And, once you're done playing the Floggers and move on to your shiny new Fulcrum, don't forget to check out my guide on the MiG-29s as well, which at the time of making this video a few months after is somehow still not outdated. Anyways, don't forget to join our Discord server to vote on what plane you want to see next in the series, and also tell me in the comments so I can add it to the vote if it's requested enough. And until next time, don't crash on takeoff, and go show those F4S wallet warriors the power of your new swing wing. See you next time.